I started my calligraphy lesson when I was a child, and uh, I was given this brush uh, from my father. And uh, when I was in college, I, I was very curious that uh, I wanted to know what this uh, hair was made from. And I would ask him, but he would never tell me until I uh, took it to a, a zoologist to uh, find it out. And a few weeks later, I received a phone call, and they told me that this hair was an elephant. And uh, he asked me what part of the elephant, and uh, I thought it was a tail part. And um, he said no, but it's because it's so soft. And he told me that this uh, hair was from elephants inside of the ear. And this is my first uh, brush. And this brush was made uh, by my great-grandfather almost 120 years ago. My father and I, we used to walk by the seashore. And one day, we found uh, a dead whale. And we thought maybe we could keep the spirit alive. So we took the baleen from his uh, mouth and uh, brought it to the brush maker and had this made. And this is a whale's, uh, not hair, but a baleen from his mouth. We have uh, uh, lots of rats in our home. And I remember when I was in high school, I trapped the mouse and uh, took his whiskers and collected these this much whiskers uh, took me about a year or so, and uh, this was made from the rat's whiskers. Uh, many of the uh, brush was given to me by friends and uh, monks, Buddhist monks in our household. And uh, for example, these are not hairs, but feathers from a chicken. And um, this is also a feather. It's uh, a peacock. Uh, this is also a chicken. A Japanese chicken have a very long tail, about uh, 10 feet long. And this is part of his uh, tail. So it's also a feather. This is also a bird, but this is a hair, not a feather. And this is, we have the largest bird in our, in our earth, and it's an uh, ostrich. And this is the eyelashes from the ostrich. And this is a hair. Also, this is a chicken also. This is a feather, not a hair, but a feather. Many uh, brushes are made from different animals. For example, uh, this one is a, a wolf, a sheep. Uh, this one is a cow. Uh, this one is a horse and rabbit. Uh, and this is a horse hair from Mongolia. And a friend uh, brought some hair, and I made brush from it. And also brush is not so much a uh, feather or hair, but this you can make from uh, just the uh, branches like this. This is straw that uh, I made for the brush. And this is not also a hair, but this is two bamboo stick that I boil it and then to hammer it uh, very softly. And I have all these uh, fibers that is part of the bamboo. So this is part of the brush. Uh, in this group, the most softest hair is probably these two. And these are my two boys' first haircut. And when they were 
born, they were very, uh, had lots of hair. In around three months' time, they had a very long hair. So this is their uh, haircut for first time. So there is no cut on the tip, but rather a very pointed, uh, pointed uh, hair. And apparently about 80% of this hair was growing in the mother's womb. So they're human hair. And there are many, 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 many brushes for different uh, occasions. So writing poetry, uh, writing or copying chanting books, and or doing painting is uh, another uh, hobby of mine. So these are uh, a different type of brush and, and different hairs. I'm going to talk about uh, ink that uh, I had created today and it's this portion is just the water and this is the ink stick and what this is is a, a charcoal a very solid charcoal and it's made uh, in this this uh, wooden stick and how to make this ink is we have a uh, small room and inside the room there is a uh, hearth and for many many months we burned wood uh, and the soot would land on this uh, particular shelves and collection of those, those uh, soot and the water and some glue and we create a so f form of clay and we put the clay into this uh, in this pocket and then face with this uh, wood and tie it and leave it for about two weeks and when you take out uh, this when it dries, this form of stick comes out. And all it is is the solid uh, charcoal or soot. And when you mix it with water, uh, the, the black or the soot come out. And we, this is ink. And there is many, many uh, charcoals. For example, this is a large one. And then there's a small, small ones like this. And these are uh, charcoals and when you go buy the charcoal they tell you the, the radiation of this charcoal is uh, some if you mix it with water it's become a little bit grayish but this one it says purple on it so they have a, a, it's a this is a black purple ink which is made from a uh, oak tree when you there is many many different color of black depending on what kind of uh, tree that you have burned. Uh, for example, this one too is a different type of gray and black. Uh, you have a large one like this, and it's quite heavy, and uh, it will last for a long time. And uh, these are also charcoal, which is uh, covered with gold and silver and when you uh, mix your ink and your ink stone, these gold particles will come out and when you paint it, there is a spackle of gold and silver in the painting or the calligraphy. Uh, some of them are very elaborate and the paint looks like it's painting and gold leaf on it. Um, it don't have to be square or uh, circle, it could be a shape of a boat. And this, these were very, uh, very traditional kind of uh, shapes that came from China. When I started to uh, learn how to do calligraphy, or even to learn the Chinese or Japanese characters, uh, first thing, I think I remember the first word was tree. And uh, tree is written like this.
and I was told that uh, if you write two trees right next to each other, it means a small forest. And if you put three trees together like that, it means deep forest. But if you write this character, it means a rain or mist right next to uh, two trees like that. Doesn't mean the rainforest, but it means lonely. If a man goes into a small forest by himself and there is a mist right in front of it, the forest, the man feels very lonely. And this is the character for loneliness. This particular character came from a pictograph symbol of a bird wing, like that. And uh, this character means heart or your mind or your spirit. So if you put a wing of a bird and with your heart being caressed by these wings, it means sad. This character means sad. This character came from a symbol of a, a yarn or five color strand. It means yarn. And if you put this yarn or string with a character, meaning to meet, it means painting. So five color strand with meeting, it means painting. This character represents a, a roof. And this character is symbol for pig. And this character for Chinese character is for house. A person standing and person lying down became this character and this character and then eventually became this character. It means to transform. The, this character is a person standing and this person is lying down, upside down, meaning someone had died. And this we call transformation. If you put a grass on top of this transformation, 
this. This character means flower, because flower, it blossoms and, and dies, and that's what this symbol means. In China, more than uh, 3,000 years ago, this, these character started to transform to uh, the present form of uh, Chinese character or even Japanese uh, characters. And for to s speak or to converse, uh, there was a mouth here and with fire to represent speaking. Perhaps it was uh, between this dinner time, there was some sort of conversation going on. And eventually, this character became like that. And this fire became like that. This character. And then present time, perhaps maybe in Han Dynasty, it was written this character. easy one like that symbol is a mountain and present uh, character for it is like that a mountain uh, this symbol represents river and present uh, form is like that. We talked about person standing like that and a tree like that and a present form. Person next to a tree represents rest person is resting, and this is a character for rest. This symbol represents sun, and this represents moon, and present form, when you put sun and moon together, it means light. Light means bright. Another one is when you put sun and if you put tree on top of it, like that, like that, it means east because the sun is ar rising behind the tree and it means east. This character meaning fish and present form for fish is like that. For horse, it was like that. And that's the 
present form for horse. For a bird, that is a bird. This uh, represents a moon, but also a part of the day that is more a early evening. And this represents a mouth and the present format like this. And this represents the name. In the early evening, it's a little bit uh, dark, getting dark, and uh, when somebody talks uh, and asks for your name, uh, it's hard to know who you are. So this came from that uh, situation. This represents fire and this is the present form for fire. This represents talking and if you put fire, two fire together it means to speak This, remember, is a character for a bird. And if you put a mouth right next to it, it means to sing or chirp. The bird is singing. And if you put a bird with a mountain, it means island where the birds are. I think uh, rain was symbol like this. In present form, rain is like this. Every character have, we call it, it uh, strokes. For example, for tree, it's one, two, three, four strokes. And for mind or heart, stroke one, two, three, four. These are the strokes. And for example, for flower, three, four, five, six, seven strokes. If you are the first beginner and then know this character, you go to a dictionary and go under four strokes and look up all the four strokes in the dictionary. And there must be thousands of them but also uh, there is a category that is for plants, animals, and some spiritual, or some of them are just uh, objects. So if you go under plants or nature, you'll find under four stroke this tree, or even flowers, etc.